What's up everyone? Today we're going to have fun learning about chess with one of Netflix's top current trending shows, The Queen's Gambit. Also, we'll see Anya Taylor-Joy, the lead actress, talk about the show as well as how she learned to speak English. But before we get into it, and in case you're new here, I want to let you know that we help you to learn fast English without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Amoga who says that our lessons are easy to understand and he can't wait to watch more lessons. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. Um, tell, well, first of all, you should tell everybody what it's about that hasn't seen it, if there's anyone left. Um, yes, so The Queen's Gambit follows an orphan who is a chess prodigy, and you get to spend seven hours with her as she tries to figure herself out, tries to figure out how she relates to the world of chess, but also has to overcome her own personal demons. Um, and it's ultimately a heartwarming story, I feel, which um, is a nice thing to have right now. Yes, yes it is. It, and it really is, like I said, you just get into it and you just, it's one of those things you just binge watch. Um, were you Yes, so The Queen's Gambit follows an orphan who is a chess prodigy. The name of the show, Queen's Gambit, is actually the name of a move in chess, and it is said to be the oldest move in history. Gambit is a word used to describe the initially planned moves in chess. The Queen's Gambit is the move in which the first player moves the Queen's pawn and sacrifices another piece in the sequence so that they can have control of the centre of the board. However, Gambit is also a word used when you do or say something to get the advantage over someone else. What about you, Sheldon? Do you have any plans tonight? Sadly, yes. Amy's taking me to a memorial service. It's for one of her colleagues who is of Asian descent. So my planned conversational gambit is to casually remark that no matter how deep they dig his grave, he'll never make his way back to China. Look, you didn't tell us that you were buying us time with your life. Listen carefully. This gambit will not kill Malice. We'll only delay him long enough for you to make an escape. There has to be another way. No, there isn't. So the Queen's Gambit follows an orphan who is a chess prodigy. A prodigy is a highly talented person that normally shows extraordinary abilities since they were a child. Don't want a plateau? No. Plateaus are the worst. And you're far too old to be called a prodigy anymore. Well, I used to skate with my cousins out in Jersey. Then when I was in Cali, I started hanging out with this guy, Tony and he's kind of a skating prodigy. I didn't know there was such thing as a skating prodigy. Well, this guy is Tony Hawk. Remember the name. I'm telling you, he's gonna be huge. Do you get frustrated by struggling to understand fast speaking natives? Then I highly recommend our Fluent with Friends course. In this 48 week course, you'll learn with the first two seasons of Friends. You'll receive PDF power lessons every week, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And the best part is, you can try it right now absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. And you get to spend seven hours with her as she tries to figure herself out, tries to figure out how she relates to the world of chess, but also here, when she says figure out how she relates to the world of chess, she means that the protagonist is trying to understand how she connects herself with everything that playing chess involves. For example, he can relate to the kids' problems because he has a six-year-old boy, or she's only interested in things related to literature. Listen, forensics went through an ex-office computer. They were trying to find something that could relate to his case, and they, uh... They found something. Yes, but also has to overcome her own personal demons. When you overcome something, it means that you become able to control a problem or deal with your feelings associated with that. Now, his agreeing to help was part of my plan. What wasn't part of my plan was it actually working. 
drove me nuts. Pesky little nerd stuck with you and always helped you overcome your biggest problem. It's ultimately a heartwarming story, I feel, which um, is a nice thing to have right now. You can use heartwarming to describe an event or a story that leads to feelings of happiness or pleasure, like their wedding ceremony was such a heartwarming celebration, or I highly recommend this book, it's such a heartwarming story. It really is, like I said, you just get into it and you just, it's one of those things you just binge watch. Um, binge is to do too much of something in a short period, such as eating or shopping. So binge watch is used when someone watches a whole season or too many episodes of a TV series all in one sitting. Speaking of that, how about binge watching our lessons with interviews? You'll find the link down in the description below. Beth, I've moved my queen to rook four. Check. The bishop blocks. Queen takes king's pawn. Castles. Night takes night. Maiden three. First check is with the queen. The king must take. Then the bishop checks on knight five. And his mate next. Sweet Jesus. Chess is a strategy game played by two people on a 64 square board. Each player has 16 pieces that move differently with the sole objective of cornering the opponent's king in an inescapable capture. You must have been very lonely. I'm fine being alone. Do you imagine that you saw the king as a father and the queen as a mother? I mean, one to attack, one to protect. They're just pieces. And anyway, it was the board I noticed first. The board? Yes. It's an entire world of just 64 squares. I feel safe in it. I can control it. I can dominate it. And it's predictable. So if I get hurt, I only have myself to blame. Let's learn the different pieces that compose the game. I've moved my queen to rook four. Check. The queen is the most powerful piece in the game as she can move in any direction with no limited number of squares on the board. There are many expressions with the word queen in English that you can use, like drama queen to refer to an exaggeratedly dramatic person or queen bee to refer to the most important woman in a situation. In this case, you can also use she's the queen of fantasy writing or she's the queen of acting to refer to any woman who is well known for being very good at that particular activity. I thought you guys had a fight. Mm, we did. A few. He says I'm a collaborator. Also drama queen. She's the queen bee, the star. Those other two are just her little workers. Regina If you're a fan of Mean Girls like me, then I highly recommend you check out this fun lesson we made. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch that lesson next. The bishop blocks. The bishop is a piece that moves diagonally for as many squares as possible, but cannot leap over other pieces. Bishop is also a high-ranked clergyman in some religions. Queen takes king's pawn. The pawn is the least powerful piece that only moves forward one square at a time, or two when making its first move. To capture an opponent's piece, it can move diagonally. To use someone as a pawn is to manipulate the person for your own advantage. As they are the weakest piece in chess, they are often used to distract or are sacrificed for a bigger, more advantageous move. Look, I'm in on this for the cash. Donna can plow wherever he wants. Okay, there will be no plowing. Patrick, uh, 
Pat, let me explain something to you here. Uh, we set this whole thing up so Cameron can get the girl. Cameron, Joey's just a pawn. Castles. Castle or rook is the piece that moves any number of squares vertically or horizontally. If someone says that a project or idea is a castle in the air, they mean it has very little chance of happening or is just a daydream. For example, they keep talking about living abroad, but it's all castles in the air. Night takes night. Night is the only piece that can leap over other pieces as it moves in an L shape. There's a commonly used expression that is knight in shining armor, used to refer to a person who acts like a hero and helps you in a difficult situation. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm madly in love with Finn. I have been since the first time we met. Dude, impulse control. He was my knight in shining armor. My feelings only grew stronger as we bonded over glee, then football. King must take. Even though it's not as powerful as the queen, since it can move only one square at a time, the king is a central piece to the game. As mentioned before, one way to end the game is to leave the opponent's king with no possible moves. Then the bishop checks on knight five, and his mate next. Check and checkmate are two heavily used expressions. In chess, check is when a player's king is under threat of being captured, and checkmate is when there's no escaping from a check condition. However, you can also use these words in daily conversation. If you keep things in check, it means that they are under control. Hmm. What was that? Oh, that's a pothole! You're hitting things on purpose! Hey, you know, you know me too well, TD! Always keeping me in check. No! Checkmate can be used in an interjection after winning an argument. You sound desperate. I'm under your skin. The only things under my skin are oil glands, hair bulbs, nerve fibers, blood vessels, and a bit of fatty tissue. You forgot about Rufini's corpuscle. <laughs> oh my God, you're rattled. Check. Mate. I don't think that was as vicious a bird as he thinks. He beat me, it's over. Um, well, you grew up, I loved reading about you before coming on the show because you grew up in Argentina and England. And is it true that you refused to learn English until you read Harry Potter? Because I love this story. Yeah, pretty much. I was convinced that if I didn't speak the language of the country I was moving to, my parents would have to take me home. That was like my my great wish was to go home. And uh, But I just became enamored with reading. There was this library in my school and... I just so desperately wanted to be able to access that world. And so my uncle taught me to read, reading Harry Potter. So those people were my first friends, really. Oh, that's so great. And that's a great way to say it too. I loved escapism. My mom um, is the reason why I'm an avid reader to this day. And it's such a great thing for kids to escape into that and also learn different languages. That's an incredible. Um, you And is it true that you refused to learn English until you read Harry Potter? Because I love this story. What does refuse mean? That's it. When you refuse something, you firmly decline or reject to do it. Yeah, pretty much. I was convinced that if I didn't speak the language... This is a very common response in casual or informal English when you agree with what the other person said. You think so little of me that you believe I would sell out my own team? Uh, yeah, pretty much. The expression pretty much also means approximately or almost, and it can be used vaguely. It's common to hear natives using the sentence, that's pretty much it, at the end of a story for instance. They use it to make it clear that they have finished talking, but that they may also have left out minor or unimportant details. Oh, honey, honey, tell them the story about your patient who thinks things are like other things. You know? So, like, when the phone rings and she takes a shower. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> Oops. But you tell it. Yeah, pretty much. I was convinced that if I didn't speak the language of the country I was moving to, my parents would have to take me home. 
To be convinced of something means that you are certain that something is true. For example, I was convinced that Harry Potter would be a huge success after reading the first book. Or, I'd love to travel, but I'm not convinced it's a good option now. Defensible. Allowed you to be drugged by a deranged sociopath. He did. And if he's in trouble, then so are we. I'm convinced we either rise together or fall apart. That was like my my great wish was to go home and uh, but I just became enamored with reading. There was this line. You can use the word enamored to express strong feelings such as fascination, love or admiration. There are a few alternative ways to say this such as in love with or crazy or mad about. Check out these examples. Corvette? No. I fell in love with this. I just would like to say that our son Victor is just crazy about the new teacher. Thinks he's great. And there was this library in my school and I just so desperately wanted to be able to access that world. And so Notice how she pronounces the word desperately. I just so desperately wanted to be able. I just so desperately wanted to be able. Unlike some other languages, the spelling of words in English do not always correspond or have the same sound. The word desperately, for instance, has three E's in it. However, each one of them sounds different and one of them has no sound at all. Take a look. The first E in des sounds like E eh in bed or egg. The second one in per is a schwa, one of the most common sounds in English. It's always weak and unstressed, like we see in brother and computer. The third letter E in desperately is not even pronounced. It's a silent letter, so it does not correspond to any sound. It's very common to have a silent E at the end of words, like in name and make. Oh, that's so great. And that's a great way to say it too. I loved escapism, my mom. We use the word escapism to describe activities that help us forget about our problems momentarily. Here we go, buddy. Hours of mind-numbing escapism. In our time, video games are training simulators that hone the skills of elite soldiers. Oh, no. Yeah, not in our time. No, it's like purely escapism, recreation. Do you have my mom um, is the reason why I'm an avid reader to this day. Which words are similar to avid in this context? Tricky question. They are all synonyms of avid that you can use to describe someone who has a great interest in reading and does it as much as possible. You can say these kids are voracious readers, they come to the library every week, or Three books a week? I had no idea you were such an omnivorous reader. You can use the expression to this day to describe something that started in the past and still continues to this present time. This isn't the same Judge Mercer that jailed you for contempt. Six hours in the slammer because he didn't like my closing argument. And to this day, I still don't understand what it is I said to the guy that, that, that struck such a nerve. Oliver Lewis, best Sirius Black was and remains to this day. Harry Potter's godfather. Um, tell, well, first of all, you should tell everybody what it's about that hasn't seen it, if there's anyone left. Um, yes, so The Queen's Gambit follows an orphan who is a chess prodigy, and you get to spend seven hours with her as she tries to figure herself out, tries to figure out how she relates to the world of chess, but also has to overcome her own hurt. Um, and it's ultimately a heartwarming story, I feel, which um, is a nice thing to have right now. Yes, yes it is. It, and it really is, like I said, you just get into it and you just, it's one of those things you just binge watch. Um, were you... Beth, I've moved my queen to rook four. Check. The bishop.
Fisher blocks. Queen takes king's pawn. Castles. Knight takes knight. Made in three. First check is with the queen. The king must take. Then the bishop checks on knight five. And is made next. Sweet Jesus. Awesome. Um, well, you grew up. I loved reading about you before coming on the show because you grew up in Argentina and England. And is it true that you refused to learn English until you read Harry Potter? Because I love this story. Yeah, pretty much. I was convinced that if I didn't speak the language of the country I was moving to, my parents would have to take me home. That was like my my great wish was to go home. And uh, But I just became enamored with reading. There was this library in my school and I just so desperately wanted to be able to access that world. And so my uncle taught me to read, reading Harry Potter. So those people were my first friends, really. Oh, that's so great. That's a great way to say it, too. I loved escapism. My mom um, is the reason why I'm an avid reader to this day. And it's such a great thing for kids to escape into that and also learn different languages. That's an incredible. Um, you, you have... Fills it with information it's trying to protect. You understand? Then you break in and steal it. Well. I guess I thought that the dream space would be all about the visual, but it's more about the feel of it. My question is, what happens when you start messing with the physics of it all?